So a bit of a funny slash embarrassing story here. So although it is particularly cold outside today, that's not why I'm wearing the hat. We got new suckers for our windscreen cover yesterday and I thought it would be a good idea to test how good those suckers were by sticking it to my forehead and seeing how long it would stay there for. However, I forgot all about them and continued watching TV for about an hour. So the reason I'm wearing the hat is because of this. What are you? An idiot sandwich. So it's either I wear a hat or I don't leave the house for a few days. But yeah, not a smart idea. blustery day again today so I'm hiding in the garage however today we are going to be cutting down some strips of 9mm ply for the roof I want to create a sort of inverted t-shape and the reason I want to do that is because we've used 50mm Celotex insulation in the roof and where the ribs on the roof of the van come down to don't come down as far as the 50mm they are less than 50mm so I'm having to create a sort of a batten along the rib to make the rib a little bit longer and then create the correct batten on top of that that is both going to wedge the insulation in but also serve as something to screw the roof into. Now the obvious reason why we're not screwing the, our roof straight into the ribs of the van is because of cold bridging. We want to avoid cold bridging, that, this is what you have to do to avoid that. So yeah, let's uh, cut down some ply. So what I've done here, right, is I have cut out a nine mil bit of ply to 135 centimeters, which is the distance that I want to cover, leaving a tiny little gap on both sides uh, of the rib. I've got that single template, and I can do that, like rinse and repeat with the rest. left is to take it into the van, offer it up to the ceiling and uh, get it all fitted. Let's do that. Despite all of our prior preparation ahead of time, we always find ourselves undoing work that we've already done. So case in point here is that we've put these roof uh, battens up, ready to put up our ceiling on. However, we have perfectly cut our insulation and perfectly placed our max airframe. But we found that because we're gonna have this gap here when we put the ceiling up, we're gonna be able to see this edge and there's no real way of hiding this. Um, we've, we've you know, toyed with just sticking some black tape over it, but it's just not gonna work as well, I don't think. So essentially what we've got to do now, we've got to decorate this in some way, shape or form. This part here is gonna have um, an edge, it's gonna have an edge coming across, which is gonna be probably bare wood. So we're either gonna to have to paint it, wrap it in some way, or something like that. So I'm gonna to have to rebuild these, which is a real pain. The other problem is that we've perfectly placed these. I've put like a, a running rail down here on the inside, perfectly sized to where these buttons are. I'm gonna to have to create maybe some kind of like support brace across here so that I can unscrew these bits, take it in, and then it'll be the exact same size as when I bring it back here. Um, that's my plan anyway. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, another instance of undoing work that we've already done and slowing down the progress even more. 
but I'll get on with that now. That looks really squiff. It looks like that side is uh, smaller than that side. It, it's not. It's just the perspective of where I've randomly put these um, these two scrap bits of wood in. So I'm now going to take it into the workshop and fashion something. Wow! How do you do that? Magic. Well, day three of having this ridiculous thing on my head, but we've made some progress. We've actually got one of one of the roof boards up. This one's quite hard because it's got the cut out for the blind. And that's why that took a particularly long time. The next one we hope is gonna be a lot easier because it is just a, you know, a single solid bit. Um, so we're gonna wrap it now, then stick it up. Then again, we've got another piece here and then one final piece at the back. But here, this is going to be the same issue with the front where we have to cut out this section here to make sure it fits perfectly and slot it in. Fingers crossed that when we come to actually put the boards together, that everything is straight. We've done as best we can to keep it straight, but you never know, something could happen. But yeah, this works quite well. Bit sticky at the minute because, yeah, the carpet, but that'll uh, become a lot easier. But they really are blackout, so I'm happy. Another push for today. We're not, okay, I'd rather be in pain than get this wrong. Shake down, do a bit of a stretch. <laughs> So, are we happy here? Yeah. Happy here. Happy. Are we happy here? Yeah. Are we happy here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, now you let go, hand the double check. I'm going to double check, why? Yep, that's all good. Okay, now go. We're having to slightly modify our plan a little bit. We were going to have these beams coming across and fixing the ceiling ply to it but we can't nail down this side or screw down this side because it's in the in the way of the blind we were really really kind of squashed as to where we had the slats join they were going to join there and there was just too much risk of tear out and stuff like that so what we decided to do is create these kind of cross beams here essentially duplicate what we've got but just that way instead that way we can then create a join here with the wood which is what we've already cut for it'll be as strong as if we had screwed it into here with no risk whatsoever um, if we didn't have these then the, the ply would potentially bend like that at the edge Right, it's time to get on with the overhead cabinets, but we've got 55 mile an hour winds today. So, yeah, battling down all the hatches. I'm going to have to work from inside today because there's no way I'm going to be able to work from outside. Any sheep wood is going to, you know, fly away. So, yeah, let's get going. Oh, just about made it to the van um, because it is super windy. Majority of the roof is up now which I think it looks great. This was this was a big step, this was a big bit that we were struggling with. We wanted to do something different, you know, best laid plans and all that. I'm massively, massively happy with the fact that we were able to get the, the blinds in. That was the, the main feature that we wanted. Totally blackout blinds, and they work really, really well, as you can see. I've got one at the front, one at the back up here, and I think they, they obviously blend in really well with the ceiling. Um, they're going to serve a great purpose. The next part of the ceiling is to put the slats in, the decorative slats in. But what I'm going to do first is actually put the cupboards up. So we've got cupboards going up here and cupboards going up on the opposite side of the van over there. Over the bed and over the kitchen, just here. So I'm pretty much going to have to 
scope out the dimensions of this cabinet. So with these drawer ends, it's very quickly becoming apparent that either the ceiling isn't straight or the uh, battens themselves aren't straight. <sighs> oh, it's cold today. It is cold today. <sighs> oh, but uh, I'm allowed out the house without a hat. Yeah. Forehead is clear. Routine. Routine is important, at least it is for me. When I was working and I moved to a job where we worked from home, I always, always needed a routine in the morning and that was to put on the uniform that I would have normally worn for work. And I found any day, which was very few in the end because of this reason, if I got up, stayed in tracky bottoms and a jumper, broke that cycle of routine and sat at my desk, my day was really unproductive and really distracted. But the thing that's different about my routine with the van versus my routine when I was at work, I would start work at eight o'clock. That would be when I was sat at my desk, you know, starting my day's work. However, with this, in the UK, there is a something called a noise abatement law. It generally means you can't make loud building noise and you've got to stop it. I think it's after five o'clock. Because my neighbours have been so good about the massive van on the road, I'm making noise all hours of the day. You know, I don't want to stretch that goodwill. So I make sure that I only work from nine o'clock or noisy work from nine o'clock in the morning. Now, generally I get up at eight. I'm out in the van by around about 8.30, assessing what work I need to do and then prepping everything so that once that clock ticks nine o'clock, I can then get on with the van. But I want to make sure that I work from my eight in the morning to my four, five in the afternoon as if I actually have a real job. So yeah, routine. And the reason I'm waffling on about it now is because it's 8.30 and I can't start work for another half hour. Nine o'clock. Let's go. So I've got the main sort of carcass up and you know, it's pretty, pretty strong. <laughs> I'm undecided on what I'm going to do with the front. I originally had a trim on the front here, which is this. And this is why I've got these notches here. And this was trimmed like that. And then all I was going to do is cut the cut the edge to fit. What I'm trying to figure out really is whether the whether I should have a trim all the way around these bits and then have the doors on the front or just do away with that entirely and then have this obviously split up into the correct sections. So I'll have three doors. I'm having a, a sort of a, a service hatch here which is where the internet and a small fuse box like a localized fuse box is going to be then we're going to have the two big cupboards for the kitchen what i've done is i've overcut this piece so there's a lip here and a lip here so when it comes time to actually fitting the doors to the to the cupboard itself i can trim them exactly to the cupboard rather than risk something going askew. Now another thing I've got to think about is whether I need to drop this down ever so slightly so that when this pivots upwards it it pivots with the strips running across here so I can't have it pivot exactly here because otherwise it will only come to like about there because it will it'll get rammed on one of the strips at the top. So I know that the strips that are going along the roof, they're 18 mil. So I at least need to have 18 mil up here as a trim, which I'm then thinking, well, if I'm going to have 18 mil, why don't I just have the full, this is a 25 by 50 mil batten. So why don't I just have the 25 mil strip and then I can have the join where this is. That might make more sense. Just not sure. I spent most of my day putting this up and down again and then up and then down again.
looks like one piece just here. If I start to undo these planks, you can see that this one piece is actually two. Um, so it gives a really, really nice cut if you have a template. Although it's a bit hard to see at the minute, the front edge, because of how I've built it, is really messy. So to try and get rid of all that, you know, messy edges, what I've done is I've just stuck a five mil bit of ply onto the front here. And then that way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my router and kind of just carve these bits out. By doing that, it means that when we open the doors that we're gonna put on the front, you're, you know, you see a nice fresh face. You don't see ugly, rough cut edge just here. By doing this with a router instead of doing it sort of on a, with a jigsaw and stuff like that, I can trim around the exact edge rather than potentially messing it up a bit by taking it away, cutting it, having the edges. I've already done that a little bit with the carcass, so I'd rather avoid it, do it this way with the trim router. I've covered everything in plastic because the router kicks out a lot of dust. First time ever carcassing. I think it did an all right job. It's not amazing, it's not perfect. There's areas which could definitely improve. This is a nightmare. So we've got to do like 24 of them and each one of them is hell. I advise against doing this kind of thing. I like it. I think it looks really smart. It's been a right pain in the ass, but it's good. So now our lovely ceiling is up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get on with mounting the light uh, beams or strips um, in between these sections. Now we're only going to do it in two specific sections, so that they run either side of the MaxFam. 
as with this van build, there's always surprises. There's always something a little bit different. So I'll show you in the end what that surprise is. But the way we're actually just going to mount these uh, these strips is just using some of this LED profile. Uh, very simple, aluminium. Then got a little diffuser strip. Mount that. Put the LEDs in here, and then you clip on the um, the diffuser strip, and then you can't see the LEDs. So I'm going to get on with that now, and uh, and yeah, I'll see you in a minute. So I've got these strips mounted now. Like I said, it's just a it's just the LED channel, the LEDs mounted on the inside and then the sort of diffuser over the top. You really cannot see the LEDs inside. Um, it sort of hides it away. When the lights are on, it diffuses the light. These run all the way down and they run either side of the max fan. What I've done is I've just jerry-rigged it up with a uh, 12 volt supply because we haven't got our electrics in yet. Let's, uh, let's see what they look like. So I'll block out all of this light. Let's block this out and on they come. You can only just see the LEDs, um, otherwise it provides a nice sort of strong beam of light. However, the thing that is a little bit different is this. So I can change the pattern of lights dependent on exactly how I want them in the van. So for example, you can reduce the relative brightness of the other lights down as much as you want. So now they're really, really dim over there and these are really, really bright. Let's say early in the morning, I want to get up. We've got all the blinds down. We've got all the blinds across. It's a nice dark environment in here and I don't want to wake Emily up, but I do want to make a coffee and I just need a little bit of light, just a tiny bit of light. I can just do this. I can just have a tiny bit of light just to illuminate the kitchen. Let's say it's movie night and you want to just light up the back wall just a little bit, just to give a little bit of light over the top of you. Then you can just flick this on and again, adjust the relative brightness that you want it. It can be blue, it could be purple. It can be Can be literally any colour along the spectrum. Or I can just light them all up and again choose any colour along the spectrum. Absolutely any colour that I want. Yes I individually adjusted them by the app however you can save certain patterns and name them certain things. You can also link it to your you can have a command so that certain themes or sections come up up at any one time. Any single combination is possible. So yeah, I think that's really smart. I think it's gonna be super, super useful for, for what we need it. It just adds that little bit of extra, bit of something that makes it a little bit different. I haven't seen that done in a van. Obviously I've seen the, the strips done before, but I haven't seen that kind of modular lighting set up before. Um, if you wanna know how I did it and what type of LEDs they are, cause it's a very specific type of uh, LED strip and LED controller that you need for that. It's not just RGB lighting, you need a specific uh, controller. They're not that expensive. You can make kits yourself for even cheaper. Um, I also wanted it to work with a lighter, so um, I bought a ready-made kit and, and that meant I could just kind of stick it up really. So I hope it kind of provides maybe a little bit of inspiration to you or something like that. Maybe you just want white lighting up there and the rest doesn't bother you. But yeah, I, I think it's a, a smart alternative. But that is it for the ceiling. It has been a long, long slog. It's really tested our patience in some places. A bit like the bulkhead was was pretty make or break, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. These two things was has taken us so, so long because we've had different ideas. Our ideas have changed. There were lots of things that we came across. It took a lot for us to complete and I'm really, really happy with the outcome, especially with the lighting, the blinds. As you can see, we've started plying out some of the walls and we've stuck a, uh, some primer on the walls. So you're actually seeing how the van's starting to take shape. We're gonna be moving sort of from top to bottom. So now that we've done the ceiling, we've moved onto the cabinets, we've moved onto the walls, and we're gonna start moving you know, down a bit where we're gonna start framing out the windows, doing the kitchen, and we've got a bit of a plan for something different for the bed. So. That's exciting. Can't wait to show you. But thanks for watching, and uh, until the next video from uh, me and Emily. Bye. Butter uh, and stuff like that. So. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm.
I am, however, gonna commit a cardinal sin with this cheese drink. I've got the stuff all over my hands and I don't really have time anyway, so. Just heard a thousand souls go. <sighs> Sorry.